the October market watch report just came out last week. No surprise, October was yet another record setting month for Toronto. Detached houses hit an average price of $1.54 million in the GTA. That's 27.7% higher than last October. High prices and low inventory resulted in a decline in sales activities in the low rise market. The number of sales was down 11.1% for townhouses and 18.3% for detached houses compared to last October. On the other hand, the condo market saw a 28.9% increase in sales activities with average prices up 13%, just over $700,000. That's the resale side of things. We are also seeing new records in the pre-construction condo market. 22,107 pre-construction condo units were sold in the GTA in the first 10 months this year. That's 63% higher than during the same period last year. And it is the second highest level on record just 1,800 units behind 2017. In terms of unsold inventory in the entire GTA, the number of unsold units declined 11% year over year to 11,955 units. That's 16% below the 10 years average. Again, it points to low supply and high demand even in the pre-construction condo market. Of course, the talk in town continues to be affordability. Everyone is pushing the government to do something. So this month, the government will be voting upon a major policy proposed to make housing more affordable. You see, whenever the government implements a new policy, it doesn't always make things better. It could actually make things worse. Which way would it go this time? Have you heard that the City of Toronto plans to force condo developers to dedicate around 5 to 10% of the floor area in new condo buildings to affordable housing units? That's the newly proposed policy called the inclusionary zoning policy. If it passes, we can expect to see around five floor of affordable housing units in a 50-story new condo building. The affordable units would be offered for both rental and ownership, targeting household with an annual household income just above $32,000. On this phase, the policy does seem to make housing more affordable for lower income households. But wait a minute, who is going to pay for the building costs of those affordable units? The government's plan is to make the condo developers pay for them. Well, what does that really mean? The developers are going to shift the cost to the condo buyer. This would result in one bedroom unit prices going up by around $68,000 based on the latest report from Alters Group, a real estate data company. So ultimately, the buyers in the rest of the building are paying 11% more for those who benefit from their affordable units. And the prices for these market units will obviously spike even higher to cover the cost. Here's the thing. What is the profile of the majority of the buyers for the market price units? The middle class. So housing would actually become less affordable for the middle class. Essentially, the government would be making housing more affordable for the lower income households at the expense of the middle class people. Is this going to make the affordability issue better or worse? We will soon find out. I will keep you posted on the voting results and how this policy evolves. Subscribe and hit the bell now if you want to stay up to date on this policy.